Judge, today's case is Miss Sophia. They have been on and off for 10 years. She says it's because of his drinking and insecurities. Now she says she's done for good. Let's see if she really is. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toler presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Sophia Landrew and Aurelius Bates. The two of you have been together for 10 years on and off, engaged for the last three. You do not, however, want to be together anymore. Ms. Uh, Landry, you're seeking $700 for the value of original music you say Mr. Bates destroyed in a fit of anger, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Landry, let me start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Dealing with Arias and his attitude, his temper, his lack of control of his finances, I'm about ready to check myself into a mental hospital. I can't deal with that anymore. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It's like raising a little boy. It's like he's a little boy trapped inside this grown man's body. I remember this one time where I was having a discussion, minding my business, on my own cell phone, and I, he was over, overhearing some, some words that I was having with the person I was talking to. So I get us off the phone, and he tells me, well, he asked me, you know, why was I still talking to this person? Who was I talking to? Just all up in my Kool-Aid, don't even know the flavor. I'm talking to whoever I'm talking to. <laughs> that ain't got nothing, to, absolutely nothing to do with him. So I see that his temper was kind of, right, you know, rising, so I decided to go ahead and leave the room. Just leave the discussion, mm -hmm. leave where it says it's not that serious. I'm talking to Tom, Bill, Sally, Jane, and Paul. It don't matter who I'm talking to. So I end up coming back into the room. He done had him a temper tantrum. I walks around <laughs> where, that, where my um, dress and everything is at, and I see some CDs on the floor. I'm not thinking anything about it. I'm like, okay, he done had a little tantrum, so let me go ahead and clean up the mess. I goes over there, I see my name on one of the CDs. I'm a hip hop artist. I produce all of my music and everything myself, distribute all my music myself. So I'm looking down, I'm like, Lord, please do not say this is my name Bam. on this CD. And I walks over there, I see all of my broken music, all of my, all of my music broken up. He oh, that's had him you. Fit. Spitting lines. Mr. Mr. Bates, did you tear up her original music? Um, yes, ma'am, I did out of anger. Oh. But what were you angry about? This is, as she's still associating with the same people that's dealing with the ex, these people she does music with, they're all in this together. This guy is kin to these people. Mm -hmm. And all these people are associated with these people in this group. So I'm like, you know, you know why are you not telling me, you know, exactly what you have going on? I don't have to well, you know, let me ask you a question. No, hang on, hang on. Let me ask you a question. Do you think she's still messing with the ex? Because, you know, you're in the music business, you have an ex in the music business, you can't just distance yourself from everybody you deal with and start fresh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's your business. Well, I understand that, but out of, I did it out of anger because I didn't, you know, she don't tell me things. Because like, you didn't know who I was stop, talking to. Stop, stop. And I'm like, you know, you're still associating with these people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not telling me exactly, um, because in the conversation she was beating around the bush like, She's not telling them exactly what she's in Colorado oh, for. Oh, I see what you're like saying. Stuff like this is, it's like, it's like I'm out the picture, and it's like, well, now I got this going on, but I'm in this place, and um, I'm doing this. I'm so, with you, Miss so Landry. In the, in the, um, in the conversation, can I say, you go ahead. In the, in the come, in, I, while I'm trying to talk to her, I'm trying to tell her how I feel about it. I'm trying to get her to understand, you know, if you if you're not doing anything, you don't have anything going on with these people. I need. To, I'm trying to get you to understand how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not, you're not, she don't want to hear that. It's like, with the, it really is just nothing, it's nothing. It's not just like an attitude to the point where I can't, I can't tell her exactly how I feel about something mm -hmm. without her shutting me off. Right. So right. then that point, I'm like, I'm not getting no understanding out of what's going on. Uh -huh. So. He says you're being circumspect. He said if there's nothing to hide, pe people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. So you, you're not being clear and upfront about what you're doing. That's what he's saying. Judge, I didn't have, I did not have to tell those, the individual that I was talking to, I didn't have, I didn't want to tell them where I was at. I was, I, me and Arias had just got back together. We wasn't even together, back together that long. No one knew that we was back together. So who I was talking to, 
I didn't let them know that, hey, look, Arise and I are back together and I'm, we're trying to make, you know, make everything work this time because we had separated. I, I had only came back for three days. Mm -hmm. I was just came back. I wasn't even there 72 hours and all of a sudden he doing the same thing that he was doing that led me to leave him the... The but first place, yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Tell me about his temper. Give me some examples of what he does and how far he goes. This, besides, outside of the music, which that's, that's something, but my job. Now he messing with the church's money because now you take it from my, you taking food out of my mouth, your mouth, everybody's mouth. Everybody got to eat off of these. Now we work it together. The reason I was, we work together at the cow plant. So this is a very, this is a dangerous, dangerous environment, dangerous job. So <laughs> you have to, when you train someone, you have to have some type of professionalism or something about yourself. Some people are training, but everybody not, everybody not able to train. He is not able to train, not even a dog. I wouldn't even let him train a rope <laughs> or rat or nothing. He can't train anything. So we over here, we working together. And his, he expect me to get the job down in 72 hours. I have 45 days to learn the job, mm -hmm. so he getting upset and everything with how I'm. I guess I'm not doing it up to. You're his, not picking up. Yeah, on the job. This quick is a, I'm, I was going to be the first woman to actually do this job. No woman has ever took on the, the, this job type. So this is a very um, big job. deal. You, yeah. it's a big deal. So his temper, he got so aggravated and everything with me, frustrated. His temper was so bad to the point where I had to go to the supervisor and say, hey, look, I'm no longer able to work in this department or, and work with him any any longer. Were you, you crunchy and cranky when you were trying to help her learn the job? Um, no, ma'am. At this time, um, we're working with a machine that it stops the line every time. So I'm training her, but I don't expect her to get the job overnight like that. I just was trying to get her to the point where she can get the job down pat. She was doing a good job or whatever. So all of a sudden, um, at one point, she didn't get the job, um, do it right at mm -hmm. that moment. And so it was like, well, then she let the machine just roll by. So the guy telling me, well, then catch the machine. I'm like running, trying to catch the machine. <laughs> and she's in the way. So she's in kind of in the way. So I kind of, I didn't push her. I just tried to yeah, go yeah, catch yeah, the yeah. machine. It was an emergency. And then, and then I tried to catch the machine because she just let it roll on by. So the guy telling me, get the machine because it's going to be on me. Right. So you didn't push at that me. Time, she was like, she just got angry. Like, I, if I ain't want her to, like, she, she really mad because she didn't get it. Right. And then it's like she put I it on her, you. Right? She like, you know, like they now you let, couldn't just you know, let it. Like, you couldn't let the machine just roll on down the super I'm in mean, training. That's his job. But that's, that's what he was trying to catch the machine. Yeah, but he didn't have to push me either. He might have. It was an emergency. I had to do it. You had a loose machine. He's a trainer. No, no, you, he's right about that one. You, you, you blew that one. You gotta catch the machine. Six months into the relationship, she cheated on you. Is that true? Uh, yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. How did you? What happened, and how did you find out? You say sometimes when you drink, she irritates you. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Could you explain that to me? Well, yes, ma'am. Well, I do. I do. You know, when I alcohol kind of mm. influences things a little bit, a little bit more. But when she's on it too, it don't make it no better. If we, oh, she drinking too? Yeah, if she was at that time. Oh, okay. So it ain't like she's just innocent over there, like, <laughs> you no, know, I'm the only one that, and I'm So here. do you guys fuss and holler a lot when y'all drinking? Yes, ma'am. It gets to the point, if, if nobody, if somebody, let's say if we can be having a conversation or an agreement, about, uh, disagreement about something, one of us want to be heard. And so at that time, both of us want to be heard, and it's not going to work at that right. point. So if I say something I can't get out to her to reach out to her, and it's not working, well then come say we clash right then and nothing's gonna be said at that time. Or it's just gonna, the argument just gonna escalate. Escalate. Ms. Landry, what do you have to say about that? Anything in the communication department? 
Yes, we have lack of communication. It's a hit and miss, especially when he's under the influence. You, you can rarely talk to him while he's sober. You can't really get anything <laughs> through to him when he's intoxicated. Everything go over his head. Mr. Bates is right. Everything is right. And if you don't want to hear it, he throws him a tension test. Oh, well, forget it, then. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You ain't even giving me a chance to say anything. If I don't say it the way that he wants to say it or it comes out the way he, want, he expects it to be said, oh, you can't talk to Mr. Bates, especially a little bit, a whole oh, lot. So we <laughs> <that happen. laughs> well, when you say a whole lot, how, how often does he drink and how much does he drink when he does drink? Every day. Every day. And how much? Oh, uh, about uh, four or five beers. Every day? The big beer. Mm. Look at that. That's the truth. Yes, it's the truth. It's the truth. How do you stay so thin? Four or five big beers every day. I'm just asking. I've been, I've been huh? inside all my life. Really? Yes, ma'am. Huh. I've been inside Got all my life. Got a fast metabolism. Good for you. Chase right. Uh, six months into the relationship, she cheated on you. Is that true? Uh, yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. How did you... What happened and how did you find out? Um, at this time, um, we had just got together, whatever, and so um, she comes to the car one night, and she was like, "I got something to tell you." I'm like, "What?" You know, we we was like into a relationship, but we really wasn't. I didn't know if she had a boyfriend or not. She didn't tell me that she was going mm -hmm. with this guy this time or anything. She just popped up and tell me something. Like, well, you know what, Riz? I'm sorry, I cheated on you. I'm like, you cheated on me. She like, how do you feel about that with her? I'm just sitting there like, ain't nothing I can really just do or say or nothing mm -hmm. about that because, you no know, people, I'm the type of person, people do things, they just like, and they, they, you know, people mess up in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't look at her the on, wrong way or anything. Ever since I met Sophia, I always looked at her as a friend. Mm -hmm. I never looked at her as anything less than that. You know, I looked at it as a friend. You know, you still my friend. Understand people mess up. That's how I looked at it, because I had a lot of love for her, you know? Mm -hmm. So does it, does it make you insecure now, or, or has it messed with your ability to trust her? Because that was a very forgiving spirit, which I, you know, um, I when congratulate. The, well, well, at this point, it kind of, it doesn't, because I grew, I grew out there because I got much understanding for people as mm -hmm. a human being. I haven't, I'm not the perfect person in the world myself. But at the same time, if something's keep reoccurring and from that situation, then, you know, yeah, I'm gonna have a problem with it. You know, I can trust, you know, mm -hmm. trust. I can give you the benefit of the doubt, but full trust, I can't. I can't stay there, I can't, I have to just transform my whole life if I'm around this man. Mr. Bates, and you, what's your version of that? Well, here's my thing, young. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Why do you say his insecurities are overwhelming? So one day, the roommate was, had, gave me a call. He was at work. He was leaving work early because he was sick. He gave me a call and told me that, hey, look, you know, I'm coming home early because I'm not feeling well. Mr. Bates didn't know anything about he was coming home. So I was like, um, you know, Mr. Bates, he coming home from work early. Um, he was like, why is he coming home early? Why he called you? Why he didn't call me? Why he didn't tell me? I don't know. I don't have any of those answers. Mm -hmm. I just know that he told me that he coming home. So he felt some type of way about... The, the man giving me a call, saying, hey, look, I'm coming home. He felt like we had this whole thing going on. Mm -hmm. He called me, and he was like, you know, um, I didn't answer the phone. He called me when he was at work, and the man, by this time, the man had made it home. I didn't answer the phone because I was asleep. He felt like it was some, some, some funny some stuff funny, going yeah, on. Funny and I tried to explain to him, you know, hey, look, you know, it wasn't anything going on. This led, this went on for weeks until the point where I was like, you know, you need to talk to this man. And I told the man, I said, look, you need to talk to him too. Let him know, hey, look, this is not going to go right. He don't want me at the house by myself when, when the man is around. I can't stay there. I can't, I have to just transform my whole life if I'm around this man. Mr. Bates, and you, <laughs> what's your version of that? Well, here's my thing, young. Um, we always communicate whether, you know, well, I got something to do, getting out of work early, this and that, this and that. Well, here's the thing. 
He didn't, he usually tell me, we'd be like, well, I'm getting out early. You didn't tell me that you was gonna get out early or nothing. You know, she's at home by herself, and I'm like, well then, okay, why are you not telling me um, that you about to leave work early and go, and go to the house? I mean, you're not telling me anything that's giving me the- Oh, Mr. Bates, that's a little off. Isn't that a lot to ask of a roommate that he has to report to you his whereabouts so you can make sure that he's not home alone with your lady? It's just that I look at it from a respected side. Um, that we always communicate. We always communicate. That's now. And this time now, it was out of the ordinary. It, yeah, it's out of the ordinary because usually we communicate, okay, at this time, you just pop up and leave. You my ride, you my ride to and from work. We well, always you communicate. Well, you we, should have led with that, Mr. Bates. Don't say that to me. Tell the story a little better. But, I got you. You should have led with that. I understand what you're upset about. I want to. I want to ask you a question. You say she can. She always says she's going to put you out whenever there's an argument because she says, "Cause her name's on the lease. You got to go." Tell me. Give me some examples of what she's been doing in that regard. Um. It all depends if. If things not going right financially, or I got a temper problem, or, or something like that, you gotta go. Um, it's, it's time to go. Uh -uh -uh, I can't deal with that. You got to leave. Um, you know, she wants me to work on something, but if it's not happening within her time frame, or the money is not right at the time, you gotta, you gotta go. go. Are yeah. you quick to put him out, Ms. Landrew? I surely am. This is the thing. <laughs> you are not. You are not no little boy. You a grown man. I didn't take on the role of being no one's mother. You say you want $700 for the destruction of the original music that he engaged in while he was hot about something. Tell me, is that the story you told me in the beginning? Yes, ma'am. Tell me what did he destroy and why you value it at $700. Man, oh, that's over 11 years of music material that I have put out myself. I have been making music for 11 years. It's not easy to do that. Everything, I work for that and I, I distribute my music myself. So I, go in, I pay for the studio time and everything myself. So all of that, that cost, yeah. that... But what did he destroy? He, destro he destroyed my entire collection from the, from the 11... From, I, I had all of my original... Music. Oh, oh, I guess I'm trying to figure out what the platform my, is. My CDs, I didn't have, I didn't have anything on no hard Nothing was drive, downloaded, like uploaded, Everything or whatever the, they do? It's at the studio that I recorded it, so in order for me to get it, I have to pay for that to be onto a hard drive. Mm -hmm. I did, it's that was, How that, much does it cost to put was, that on a hard that, uh, drive? More, more than $750. Because that is a lot, that is years and years and years of Mr. material. Bates? But where'd you get $750 from? $700 Just from? Just from, from the studio. No, was it, it was no. It was only four. Well, where the rest of my CDs are? Where's the rest of my music? I don't know. Was, Did you destroy her music though? It yeah, doesn't matter. It was four one. CDs of her music. It's okay. mine. Yeah, but you have to you have to pay to get them downloaded yes, from the, have, from the yes. thing. Listen, I don't know how much that's worth. I don't know how much that costs. Uh, too much. You, you can't destroy your stuff. I can't, but you haven't proved seven hundred. I'm gonna give you a nominal amount that just shows that I know you have to do something. I don't think it's gonna cost seven hundred fifty dollars. No, I don't know. Go but you could have proved it, it to that. me by bringing it, bringing a bill or yeah, a, I, I a could receipt have. or something. I could have. So I can't I can't give you what you asked for. I'm just gonna give you it's hundred dollars. Now this, let me tell you something about the stupid tax. You seem to pay it a lot. All of those tickets and the fees, the whatever state are you in, whatever state you're in is making a mint off of you not taking care of your business. There's no reason to have all those tickets. It's no reason not to take care of your tickets. It's no reason for any of all of that. The state has plenty of money. Don't volunteer to give them any more of yours by not for following the rules. Yes, ma'am. $100 in favor of Ms. Landrew. It is so ordered.